we are a referral group, right? So our purpose is to be sending referrals back and forth. So one of the, the one of the education minutes that we put together, and we've done a couple of times, it seemed to be very well received, was talking about how to get and give strong referrals. And my little clicker doodad's not really working properly, so I gotta find out what's up with that. Um, but hopefully we'll get this thing working in just a minute. Anyway, so what I wanted to share with you guys today is some tips and tricks for making good, strong handoffs, strong referrals. Um, but there's a couple of things that kind of come before we start thinking about how to refer someone. So there's really two concepts to this. One is how you handle the handoff so that it doesn't get dropped. You know, it's kind of like, you know, Olympic athletes uh, spend 90% of their time, if you're on a relay race team, 90% of races are lost in a relay because of poor handoffs. Literally thousands of seconds separate first place from 20th place. So it's in that handoff where most of that time is lost. So the same kind of thing happens in referrals. If we don't give a good, solid, strong handoff, there's a very strong possibility that that referral never materializes. So that's one element of what I'm going to talk to you about briefly this morning. The second element of that is how we create a strong endorsement or edification for the person we're referring. So let's start with the edification piece first. You know, we all talked about, and you've heard me share this idea many, many times, that there's really only two ways to compete. Um, you know, you can be the lowest price or you can be more valuable. And it all comes back to that whole concept of value equals benefit minus cost. So there's only really two ways to balance that equation and increase sales. One is to raise your benefit or the other is to lower cost. And I think all of us in this room would agree that it's counterproductive to lower cost. I mean, you can't compete with Walmart. Why even try, right? So what we need to understand when we are referring our partners in the group is that we need to be doing a good job of promoting our partners and their unique value. So you guys have heard me talk about hub statements before and I've outlined exactly what that means. So like for example, when I introduce myself, I, do, uh, you know, I help professionals implement better strategies and tools that accelerate their business growth through our unique business acceleration program. What do I do? Who do I help? And how do I do it? Through what system? So the first step in what you've got in your packets is how you introduce yourself during a member minute. So what I want you to encourage you to do is when thinking about how you're going to refer your partners in this group in future, what we really need to do is pay close attention when they give their member minute as to what they do. Who do they help and how do they help them? Because that gives us the guts of what we should say about them when making an introduction to a possible referral or a potential client for them. The second thing is, is that that handoff starts with the person who has the baton. If I've got the lead for Brandon at Capital Mortgage, or I have the lead for uh, Candy and, and Emily at Heads Up, it's my job to make sure that I'm putting that baton in the best position. So I have the responsibility to make sure I'm doing my job when introducing Candor Emily to that potential client of theirs. So I need to understand what makes them different and more valuable. And I need to promote that. Uh, if you think about it from the idea of, of, of the sales pitch, I mean, look at this guy in the mirror. I mean, if this guy was trying to sell you exercise equipment, would he have a lot of credibility? Probably not, right? We'd really be looking for somebody more like this if we're trying to buy exercise equipment, right? So how do we make our partners look like this instead of like the fat guy? Well, it comes back to how we position the value of the person we're trying to refer. So like, for example, if I'm introducing somebody to Brandon for mortgage services, one of the things I'm going to say about Brandon to that customer is, you know, Mr. Johnson, I really think you ought to talk to Brandon at Capital Mortgage. He does things a little bit differently than most mortgage companies because he helps you look at the bigger picture and create a better product to get you to where you want to go faster. I really think you ought to spend a little time with him. I'll have him give you a call. Is that okay? So I'm edifying Brandon when I give that strong of an endorsement. How comfortable is that client going to be at answering the phone when he sees Capital Mortgage Solutions pop up on his caller ID? Have I done my job right when handing off that referral? And that's what it comes to. That's the first key to a good, strong referral, a strong handoff. The second key of it is then putting Brandon in charge. So you notice I didn't say, Mr. Johnson, 
here's Brandon's card, call him, would you? No, I put Brandon in charge. I told Mr. Johnson that Brandon was going to be calling him. So that's the second key to a strong handoff. Making a clean handoff is really about putting your partner in charge of the follow-up. Okay? Now we have to trust each other that we're all going to follow up appropriately, and I don't think that's a problem in this group. If it is, let me know, and we'll talk about that later. But how we do that is a real simple strategy. There's really basically two talking points. Mr. Johnson, is it okay if I have Brandon give you a call? Oh, by the way, in case you missed the call, here's his contact information. And then I'll get the card. But I'm giving Brandon, I'm getting the client's permission to have Brandon call that client directly. Does that make sense? How much stronger of a handoff is that than just saying, Mr. Johnson, here's Brandon's card, give him a call. See, if I just give the card out, I'm putting the follow-up action in the hands of that potential client. And what's the probability that that potential client gets busy, distracted, their kids have school functions, and all the other things of life get in the way, and somewhere along the line, that card gets lost and forgotten. Versus if I'm giving Brandon the information to be able to initiate the contact. So I've given a strong endorsement, and I've put Brandon in the driver's seat with making that connection. And that's how we create a strong referral within our group. So, that's the end of your Mentor Minute. If you'd like more information about any of the other stuff that I do at X Square Business Development, I'm going to give you my Member Minute right now. You already heard my, uh, my 30 second pitch, but if you would like more information, certainly just give me a call and we'll get, we'll get started.